Bush Grand National Series on the track as we look down at this beautiful facility from our Advanced Auto Parts aerial platform. Advanced Auto Parts, the home of parts done quickly. We're under caution once again. Rodney Combs, the pride of Lost Creek, West Virginia, getting into the wall here today. And Rodney making his way to the infield care center. Looked to be okay, but holding his shoulder, as we showed you a moment ago. Want to bring you up to date on the upcoming events you'll see here on TBS, NASCAR Winston Cup events. Tomorrow, of course, we bring you coverage of the Mellow Yellow 500 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. 1 o'clock Eastern time on TBS. Our Sears Craftsman race schedule for 1995 is already in place as well. And we'll show you what events uh, we can look forward to when the next racing season rolls off. After tomorrow's event our final event on TBS in this season 1994 but we start in March up at Richmond Virginia the Pontiac excitement 400 that wonderful Sunday afternoon show back here at Charlotte at the end of May Memorial Day weekend for the Coca-Cola World 600 the Miller Genuine Draft 500 in July at Pocono Pennsylvania Pocono International Raceway we go back to Richmond on Saturday night September the 9th for the Miller Genuine Draft 400 and then uh, 366 days from tomorrow the Mellow Yellow 500 back here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway October the 8th. So another full season of NASCAR action coming your way on TBS Sports. We're looking forward to bringing it to you next year. We'll be back to put this one under green in a moment. This season, portion of the All-Pro Bumper to Bumper 300. 26 cars on the lead lap as the pace car comes in and we get set to go racing. Well, this is actually, I said it was a bad break for Uncle Mike, uh, my brother, but actually it might turn out to be good. He's got four fresh tires. He might be able to get around Mark here since Mark really isn't very wanting to race anybody right now. He might be able to get that lap back, which could turn out to be okay. Well, let's see what happens out here. To Mark Martin drawing out to a 10-car length advantage over the yellow car of Michael Walter. Uncle Mike, as DW calls him. And on board with Derek Cope a little further back. He threw the hand up then. He said, hold up, guys. It's a little tight up here. Let's single file it in here and let's don't run over each other. Derek Cope, ninth position. Just in front of him. You know, that's good savvy racing when a driver will do that, to tell the guy behind him what he's going to do. He was going to lift out the throttle and he didn't want somebody to ram him in the rear. So, uh, you know, that's good savvy racing. I'm glad to see him do that. Let's get a... Uh, quick report on the weather here. Yeah, it is a weather report too, Ken Squire. What's happened is our weather has changed dramatically from the green flag. At that time, we had heavy overcast. Track temperature was about 90 degrees. Well, it's 17 degrees warmer now. We've got full sunshine, and it is changing the way the race cars respond to the speedway. So much so, in fact, that Mark Martin's crew is out trying to find a set of scuffed tires, which they'd like to put on this race car at the halfway point. Set up start for the weather we've got right now. 79 laps are complete and take a look at the Napa running order here as you ride once again with Derek Cope, a Cope closing on Hillen. It's a little lower line there. Yeah, he does. Uh, looks like Bobby's car is pushing up in the turn just a little bit and uh, Derek's able to get the nose down under him. Derek will get by him if he keeps that up. You know, I think Mark must have a, a monitor or a headset or something in that car because he must have heard me say about Uncle Mike. So he's going to try to hold him at bay, I think. <laughs> See Chad Little there in fourth spot, the number 23. Right behind him is Jarrett. Parsons next. I wouldn't Nima count Chet. Bill Parsons out either. Uh, that car's on Hoosier tires, and he didn't show much steam here in the May race until the second half. Just consistent, just smooth. Hanging in job. there. Hanging in there. There's second place, which is the 87. And staying in there, hanging in is McLaughlin. Lap car is Michael Walters, who had an incredible lap in qualifying the other night. Yeah, we I thought, thought he was going to psych himself out. He was going <laughs> so fast. He got on the TV a little earlier, and, and I thought he was working himself into a spot where he could get in trouble. Yeah, well, I think he knew he had a good car. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you know your car is that good, you just need to talk about it. Let people kind of give you the confidence, say, yeah, your car's good, you're good, you get the job done. I think he just wanted to talk about it. I don't think he was psyching himself out. Well, what everybody was really talking about that night, folks, was DW <laughs> saying, hey, those kids up there, they, they're they really going. We'll take a look at this battle for fourth. As you see 32, Jarrett, and you see the 29, Parsons, down on the inside, whipping beneath. Chad Little in the 23, and drawing with them, Bobby Hillen. Four or five miles an hour faster than they've ever qualified for tomorrow's race, Darrell. Kids like Ward Burton, Young John Andretti, your brother. A lot of guys looking very brave out there. Nemechek. Well, that's not what wins races. Uh, not 500 mile races. That's what wins poles. What wins races is sharp pit crews like mine and Earnhardt's and Rusty Wallace's and drivers that use their head and, their, and, and not just 
just her foot. Qualifying's a whole different ball game. That's a one lap race and we're talking about a 500 mile race. So you're looking forward to tomorrow from 30 foot. I, I feel excellent. I'm pretty racy. <laughs> hey, take a look at Phil Parsons looking racy just as Darrell was saying a few moments ago. He's just been out here in the weeds looking things over and he's beginning to make his move. Parsons jumping up through cars, picking up another spot. See, the thing about that car, it's on Hoosier tires. It's his car. He's going to drive that car pretty pretty smartly. He's not going to take a chance. He doesn't want anything to happen to it until he gets to halfway anyway. So I think he's doing a good job right now. Martin Leedy and Nima uh, Check with Lachlan come up next, second and third. Parsons back there six. You won here last time. How important is it to run good at Charlotte? This is obviously a big race. It's probably the second biggest race on the uh, on the circuit, and uh, so we certainly would like to do good and showcase our, our team and, and and myself and whatnot. But uh, who knows? It's going to be real competitive. It was competitive last time, and we were fortunate enough to win. So we'll see what happens. See, Ken, all these drivers that are in this series, they're auditioning every week. They are trying to impress Winston Cup car owners. They want car owners that are watching this race in the garage area. They say that guy could make a Winston Cup driver. That guy could be a winner. And there's so many musical seats out there right now with nobody to fill them. Some of these guys don't want the music to stop and not be sitting in one of them. That's what they're thinking on Saturday. They're looking forward to Sunday and what can they do to get in that deal on Sunday. But Carson seems star-crossed and hopefully he came out from behind that with that race in May. Uh, he had the Winston Cup experience. It went away from him. He got dropped out of a couple of teams. He came out here with his own team and just did a remarkable job here. And that's what he's trying to duplicate. Now look at Grissom in 31 as he continues to drive up through this field. Grissom up to 13th from 45th. And uh, he's dragging a pretty, pretty savvy young man along with him. Hermie Sadler, uh, that car's been fast uh, in the past. Hermie's still in this race too, so I wouldn't count him out either. Nor uh, Benson. In the 74, back 15th. Ooh, and all of a sudden, looks to me like Grissom slowed down. The 31, the blue car on the inside. And there's a mark on the left side door. I don't know when that came about, but he's running very slowly. After that run, you can see the uh, right side messed up. The left side, I thought, had a bang on it as well. Ken, I'll, I'll just make an observation here. You heard Harry Gant say earlier they pulled a little higher gear to be conservative. The track is so fast. That car ran so quickly through traffic. We see trash on the grill, too. That could have a, have some effect on that engine. But he failed an engine. I believe he had a low gear in that car. And I believe that's why he could work traffic the way he could. He pulled a little lower gear and helped him get through traffic. But once he got the traffic out of the way and he had to run all by himself, he may have over revved that engine. That's the 13th car to retire. We're at lap 89. As you watch Dale Jarrett in fourth position and Phil Parsons in fifth, Going around the stricken car of Grissom, trying to make it back onto pit road. A 10 laps to halftime here. As Martin stays first, Nemechek second, McLaughlin third, Dale Jarrett fourth, Parsons fifth, and Bobby Hillen looking very stout in that black number 99, the Luxair car just behind them. Yeah, we see, we've seen Bobby, uh, Bob Presley, Bob Presley, Robert Presley give that to 99 car. Tells you how old I am. <laughs> That's his dad. <laughs> We've seen him give that 99 car some good rides this year, and, uh, and, and Hillen's doing a good job in that thing right now. Grissom right back to the garage. No question that that car has terminated its day. And, uh, you know, Hillen and, uh, and uh, Phil Parsons are great buddies. Uh, they go to church together. And they have wives and they're real good friends. And I know they're probably having a real ball right now racing each other. Derek Cope in that group. Back in seventh, Chad Little's eighth, Ricky Craven is now ninth. That's a good, uh, Craven's has come up through the field well because he started way back in the back, took a provisional, had a fast car, watched him qualify, and he almost crashed that thing qualifying. That's how come he got so far back in the field, but he's a savvy race car driver. As Craven lies ninth, Green is in 15th, Dale Jarrett running well in fourth. Winston Driver is able to intimidate this Bush gang out there. Not anymore, no. Those guys that have raced here enough to know and, and on the other big tracks uh, that they've learned an awful lot. And, uh, no, you can't intimidate them. They're good race drivers, and, uh, you know, they've got as good equipment or better than what you have. So uh, they know that they're good, and they enjoy racing you. That's 
Dale Jarrett leading that pack of four. You know, Bobby Hillen is uh, is just worrying the heck out of Phil Parsons here, and I don't know. They're trying to get to halfway. We got seven laps before halfway. I'd be kind of cooling out if it was me and, and just trying to get to halfway here, work on the car a little bit, and go at it harder in the second half. I don't know if uh, Hillen and uh, Parsons are trying to get by Dale Jarrett or they're worried about Cope or what the deal is, but they're racing awful hard just to get to halfway. And look at Cope drive down to the bottom and pull up on Hillen. Jarrett uh, Cope in the 82. In doing that, uh, they're allowing Ricky Craven to close right up on him, too, so he's going to be in the, in the mix here in just a second. Yeah, Craven is now having an outstanding day. But he's second in the points, and, uh, you know, if anything happens that 44 car, he could easily move into the lead. Coming in, just 92 points behind Green to Dick Berger. Well, Steve Grissom had a great run going until that engine blew up, Ken Squire. Steve, how come they're blowing up so many motors today? I don't know. I'll tell you, uh, the new surface here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Goodyear tires, uh, the cars are gripping so well and uh, pretty much running around the track wide open without lifting. Then, uh, you know, it's a pretty good while just to stay wide open, not give the motor a chance to breathe. Well, this guy can sure run them wide open. That's a factor. I mean, the, the track is so fast, and these cars uh, will run wide open around this racetrack, and you just can't do that to a six-cylinder motor. You can't do it to a V8 for that goes. There you see Tracy Leslie's number 72, and Resendez leading that pack in the 79 back in 18. Battles back up here. Ah, the squabble continues as you see Jarrett, and here comes Cope, picking up a couple more spots. Derek Cope on the drive. And Ricky Craven on the bottom there getting under Phil Parsons, and I, if I was a spotter or if I was a car owner, I'd be on the radio right now reminding my driver that we're going to stop here just a few more laps and uh, let's not have any mistakes made here before we get to halfway. These cars are six and three ten seconds down to the leader, Mark Martin and Nemechek in second. But Lachlan runs third and this cluster of cars just battles for fourth. And there's Craven. Yeah, they, they drug Craven up here. Then uh, back here is Bill Parsons and not too far behind them comes Terry Labonte and Sterling Marlin. So, all this heavy racing that these guys right here are doing are allowing some of these other cars to catch up here before halftime. Yes, folks, this is a race, and we are going to have halftime. You will have a chance to go get you a bag of popcorn and a hot dog and come back and see the best race you ever saw in your life in the second half. <laughs> we need a marching band. Oh, yeah, we, well, we may have one. This is Charlotte, you know, and you never know what Humpy's going to do for a halftime entertainment. <laughs> Well, it's a short halftime this time, folks. Just five laps under caution. Used to have 15 minutes. Look at this battle continue. <laughs> You're dead on. As they continue this little parlay, there's about five other guys that are saying, thank you very much. We'll, we'll get ourselves up in here. Well, what's going to happen is they're going to stop here, and they're all going to get out of their cars and say, man, why were you racing me so hard? I was <laughs> just trying to get to halftime, and they're all thinking the same thing. 